Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can customize the appearance of your store pages in Web Starts. Before I get into the video, I do want to invite you to tap the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. That way, you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on internet marketing, web design, search engine optimization, and similar topics. When you create a store in Web Starts, there are going to be several supporting web pages that you can customize the look and feel of. So here you can see that I've created a store. So I click on this store page. And as I click on the products, I have another view where I can see the details of each one of the products that I'm selling. And then I have options to select sizes and quantities and things like that. Then eventually I add that to my cart. And then finally I go to checkout and that's where I would enter in my billing details and my shipping information. And then if you pay close attention, you'll see there's a little login option where someone can use their email address and password to log in. And if they've done that, then hopefully they have their shipping information and their credit card and other billing information stored. So the next time they come back to my store, they are not required to enter all of that at checkout. That hopefully increases the conversion rate on my website and leads me to sell more of my products. So there are pages that display a widget uh, in the page editor that you can access. So if you have gone to webstarts.com and you've signed up for an account and you log in and this here is the dashboard view, you hover over the thumbnail to the website and you click edit site. What you're gonna see in the top left is the ability to swap between the pages of your website and under the heading that says store pages you're going to find about five different pages here the first one is called the account page then cart login product and store and i'll cover what each one of those do the account page is what people see when they log in using their email and password and that's where they would check things like their order status or their shipping information and update their billing information, like their credit card number as well. The next view called the cart is where people will land after they've added an item to their cart. So if they want to review to make sure that they have the right quantity and price of each of the items they intend to order, they generally do that by checking what is in their cart. Next, there's a page called Login. Login is simply where a person would go to either sign up to create an account so they can log into your store and save that shipping and billing information, or where they would go if they're a returning customer and they want to log in using credentials they'd previously set up. Next is the product page. The product page is where someone can find product details. They can also select variants that have to do with a specific product, for example, sizes, color, or the material. They also adjust the quantity in this view, and they can optionally display a search box so people can search for products by name on your site, or they can sort by things like highest price to lowest or lowest to highest. And then over here on the left, there are some category names so you can place products in specific categories. Now, what I'm going to show you in this video is that you don't need to display all of those options if you just think that they're adding extra decisions for your customers to make, or if you're not providing a lot of options and you just want to hurry up and get them through the checkout process. The next page I'm looking at is called the store page. The store page is a catalog of all the items that you're selling. And once again, here you have options like whether to display a search box or a sort field or the category names. But in addition, you can do things like select the number of columns and rows you want to display at a single time without requiring someone to click this next to page to the next page of items. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens when we click on what we call the store widget. These are just the widgets that are populated with our store data. So in our store app, we're going to create products, upload images, give them prices and descriptions, and then they're going to populate on places like our store page inside of what we call the store widget. So I've selected the store widget, and if I want to 
edit those products, by the way, I can just click on the edit icon that's attached and that will open up the store app where I can add more products or change the pricing or description of a specific item. Next, we have the edit style option and this is where I can change things like the font color as well as the button color, the button text color, and then the fonts and font size that I use on the website. So for example, if I wanted to use this really wild looking font on my site, I can select that there and it's immediately applied to the look and feel of this specific page. Also, if I click on the settings tab and I'm on the store page, I have several options that I can choose to display. The first one is the number of columns that I want to be displayed simultaneously. So if I have a lot of items, I might want to display things you know, five columns on a single view, or if I have a few, I might want to display fewer. I've got this set to three. Also, I can change the number of rows. So if I want three rows of products on a single view, I can change that there as well. I can adjust the image scaling to either crop or fit. So for example, if I change this to crop, you can see it actually crops out the head of the people. And that's why we have the next option, which is image aspect ratio. So if you're selling a product and the product images are very squatty or wide, you want to move towards this widest ratio. And if you're selling products that are very narrow and tall, you'd want to move down this list towards the tallest aspect ratio to display the products in their best light. Next, we have the show categories option. I can choose to not show any categories at all. I can choose to select a dropdown to show my categories, or I can choose a sidebar where I have the category names displayed. Here, I can select whether I want to show the product search box that was right up here or field, or the sorting option that was up here as well. And then we have animation and we have the pixel width down here below. So once I'm happy with those settings, as always, be sure to click save and those changes will be saved and published to your store. Let's look at the next page, and that's the product page. Similar to the store page, your product page is going to have a store widget that you can click on, and then you can click edit to edit product information. You can click edit style to change the font as well as colors, and then you can click on settings, and in this particular view, you only have the show categories option, and then you have the product search option, the sorting option that I showed you in the last view, and then you have a show sidebar option. If the show sidebar option is checked, when somebody adds a product to their cart, there will be a little slide out that shows that it's added. So for this example, let me select the color and everything and click on add to cart and you can see this little cart slides out. If you deselect that option, then when you add a product to the cart, just like I'm about to do, what happens is instead of getting that little slide out, you're going to go straight to the checkout page. So if you just wanna get people closer to the checkout process, then you might deselect that box so you can just get them closer to the final page where they enter their payment information. But if you think that they're going to be doing a lot of shopping, I think the sidebar slide out is a very helpful view. Let's go and take a look at the login page. Just like the other pages, you select the widget, you can edit the product information here, you can change the font and colors by clicking on the style icon, and you can go to the settings to make adjustments there. By the way, any elements that you add to the page. Let's say, for example, you want to say, hey, there, we're having a big sale, and you add that to the top of the page up here, that is going to be displayed on that page above the store widget. So just keep that in mind. You can add static elements above each one of these widgets or below. And of course, you can change the information that appears in the header and footer as well. Let's move to the next one, which is the cart view. The cart view, just like the last view, doesn't have a lot of options. You have, again, the ability to change the font and the color, uh, and you have the ability to hide and unhide uh, the product search or the categories, the sorting options, 
and the sidebar. And then finally, uh, let's get down to the account view. This is the view, again, that people see when they've returned to your store. They've entered in their login credentials and they can update their billing information, their shipping information, and they can view the status of their order. So if you shipped an order and you entered in a tracking code, they could come back to the website, log in, and then view the status of that order, retrieve the tracking code, and hopefully eliminate the number of email requests you get from people wondering whether or not their order is shipped and that kind of thing. And just like the other widgets, you can select it and then click on edit style to change the font color and uh, style text as well. So that's it for this video. As always, make sure you save and publish your changes and let us know if you have any questions. And don't forget to tap that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.